Sounds good. So I think today it looks like we have a pretty lean meeting. Uh, thank you everybody for hopping on. Um, good mix of attendees today. Awesome. So uh, pretty, pretty lean meeting, as I mentioned. I think everyone on here has already been introduced in the call, but I don't see everyone's avatar. So please interrupt me if that's not the case. Um, does Darryl anyone have regulars, anything? I think. Well, cool. More or less cool. regulars. Vadek and Roman are not always here, but the rest are. Awesome. Um, does anyone have anything they'd like to put on the agenda before we dig in? And you can do that throughout the call too, of course. All right. Uh, so on my end here, I have things a little bit more low fidelity this week than, than usual. So apologies for that. I don't have a design deck prepared per se, but what I do have is a couple of mocks to kind of walk through with you all uh, just in, in screenshot form and, and talk about a couple of things that are going on. Uh, so let's hop right in with that. So uh, last SIG meeting, we took a look at this screen that we have on here. What this is, is an attempt to kind of reconcile the, the layout and improve the usability of the welcome screen within Jenkins. You know, the welcome screen is not a super high impact screen, arguably. Uh, not a lot of people uh, see it and those who do are, are typically not seeing it very often. And then once they do see it and get through it or move past it, um, they don't need to, to be reminded of all of these different options so much in the future, typically. I had some really good feedback from this group in the last SIG session and also from some other uh, developers throughout the community that have reached out to you since then and uh, have an update on this layout. So this is still very much a work in progress, but a couple of changes to share. And of course, feedback is welcome here. So this is where we were before, and here's how it has evolved since then. So I'm gonna be toggling back and forth a few times here so that we can look at some of the, some of the differences. Actually, I wonder if I should, you know what? Bear with me, everyone, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna open this guy. Yeah. I'm trying to screenshot the thing for the minutes, but you're moving too fast. <laughs> sorry about that. Right. Um, give me one second here, and then I'll have a good screenshot for you. Oh. That's not what we want either. There we go. Cool. All right. So here on the left is what we had last last session. Um, you can see that a lot of the elements are pretty much the same here, right? Of course, the goal is not to, to change fundamentally how this, this part of the experience works. It's more about updating the style and then sort of behind the scenes, also trying to create something that is reusable in the future, that is extensible, and something that we might be able to leverage to uh, solve for information density on different screens throughout the UI. So. We're starting with this relatively low impact screen, but we want to create something that is really useful uh, for other areas throughout Jenkins. So on the left is where we were. Uh, you'll see that on the right, we have removed the title, um, the title prompt and the detail here. And this is all no longer contained inside of a single card. But this, uh, what the solution on the left here was doing was kind of oversimplifying this, I think, and reducing it down to bring every possible option to the same level of prominence. And that's just usually not the case, especially when we think about making this an extensible element. These, uh, these different elements uh, can be grouped differently. For example, the first two items here are a lot more relevant to one another and don't really belong at the same level of prominence as this third item. And we also have a, an extensibility issue here with this resource link at the bottom where uh, it can be really difficult to determine which option this particular uh, documentation link refers to. Imagine having two, three, five, or seven of them here. It doesn't, you know, technically feasible to stack them, certainly, but doesn't result in a great experience. So over here on the right, we've, we've uh, made it a little bit more complicated, which is a, a good trade-off, certainly, to have it more extensible. So we have a couple of groupings here. Uh, we have set up a distributed build and create a job. Now the exact 
hierarchy of, of the uh, elements in this screen can still be changed. Certainly, this is still a work in progress. Um, but you'll see that we've adjusted the design so that we can associate particular documentation links with, with, with each option, uh, as that may not be necessary here. But again, we want to create something we can reuse down the line. And this is something that might be very helpful in the future. Um, I'll stop there because I'm just kind of rambling. Anyone have any thoughts or, or questions or feedback at this point? Really nice. Yeah, I like it more than awesome. the last one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's very nice. yeah, so I think it's good that you can have multiple links because then you can like link to, you know, tutorials or videos or, you know, different types sure. of things. Some people just want the basic, you know, raw doc and other people want step by step, you know. Complete idiot yeah, absolutely. Guide. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, and then being able to delineate or I guess distinguish between which links are for which option is really key here. Um, just a dumb question, but when you refer to cards, set up an agent is one card plus the two links and then configure a cloud is another card or? or so card is, card, a, is a, card is a bit of an amorphous term. The way that I'm, I'm referring to it here and people use it differently is, is essentially just this shape in, in the fact that it was all contained, the entire uh, functionality of the screen was contained in this one shape, this one card. Um, uh, so the whole thing is the card then? Precisely, yeah. That was the idea with this, and that was pretty intentional, but it was uh, too simple and didn't allow for much extensibility. So, so we still just the, have one card in the native sign, or, or just? So what we've done here is we've moved away from, from a single card approach, right? right. Um, uh, technically, you can call these, these different elements cards, and yeah. the exact terminology that we want to label them, um, you know, we get to decide that. But yeah. but yeah, the idea is that these stacks of elements essentially would be reconfigurable for other other uh, bits of information throughout the UI. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense to me. So. Just a side question, Joe. Um, you talk about uh, reusing the component. Do you have already something in mind for another page for such things? Yeah, without. Uh, so I'm working on a couple of concepts uh, here that uh, we'll share in the next SIG meeting that are not quite mature enough, frankly, for, for my own edification. I'm still thinking through them. Uh, but I think that something roughly similar to this, not exactly like this, uh, can be done to help organized build status pages, uh, for example, um, pipeline pages. There, there's, a, there's a lot of possibilities there, and I'm kind of working through some of those ideas right now. It's still very rough. Okay, nice. Thank you. Sure. On a fundamental level, we want to see if, if we can make this um, an opportunity to, to organize things, because right now there's a lot of stacked stuff. Uh, that plugins contribute to the UI, as we all know, and uh, better hierarchy, more clarity would be would be awesome. Uh, let's see here. Without further ado, let's look at the next one, some login screen explorations. Um, I'm going to have to bear with me, everyone. Sorry for not having it up here. All right. So this is something we have tinkered with in the past, um, but it has not made its way to open source Jenkins. Uh, so on the left here, we have our current uh, login screen. It's very similar to the uh, Jenkins is preparing to, I forget what the exact phrase is. Jenkins is preparing to work or Jenkins is, is getting ready. That screen where the instance is being configured. I forget the exact phrase, but there's some very minimal screens here that get the job done. But I think as we have been creating all of our baseline styles, we have an opportunity to modernize the screen a little bit, make it a little nicer, make it a little more usable. Again, these are primarily just styling changes. Um, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So we're exploring that a little bit. So I the think we Felix... just have this one design on the right, this, that's a new one. Or is the... Sorry, can you repeat that one? Sorry, so 
the the sign on the left is the old login screen, and the one on the right is sort of like exploration, or or are they both new? The one on the left is the current login screen. Yeah, okay. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it is today, and this is the exact same thing styled styled more nicely. Look, the key the thing is we wouldn't want to come in and throw styles at a screen like this prematurely, like two months ago, it wouldn't as, it would not have made as much sense because we didn't have the typography where it is today. We didn't have the colors where they are today. Now we have those styles and we can feed them right into this. Um, and there's more we can do with this. Certainly we can highlight some more of the, uh, the great functionalities of Jenkins. And this I lifted yeah. directly from, from Jenkins. I, um, Jenkins.io, right. I believe. Yeah. Um, so very straightforward improvement here, but this might be a nice thing for us to do and just uh, exploring that. That's it for this one, really. I like it. Cool. I mean, and yeah, like you said, I mean, we could have different messages there. Yeah, yeah, it's Even kind of a blank canvas, right? Um, right now it's, it's so minimal. Uh, yeah. that we can do what we want with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think there, this is probably a rare opportunity to do something relatively low friction for a relatively nice payoff because the screen for folks who use the UI is seen relatively, it's a, it's a, you see this, a, a, um, certainly I see this a good amount of times because I forget to keep myself signed in. It's just a, more of a branding ex exercise using our baseline styles than anything else. But I think yeah. it's good. It's not used so much in a lot of companies with SSO, um, but for the, for the ones using LDAP or local, it is. So I, I never see the screen, but um, right. except when I'm developing locally. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I think if this were a huge, um, a huge undertaking or anything like that, that it would not be worth it to, to redesign it, frankly. Um, and Felix, maybe you could speak to it a little more, but I think this should be a relatively uh, straightforward implementation, um, you know, when we, when we can get around to it, certainly not an urgent item. Yeah, it's straightforward indeed. I mean, it's also maybe we would also like to consider uh, extensibility regarding the logo and stuff so that companies can have their own welcome screen or something. But yeah, the styles themselves themselves are really easy. It's actually an opportunity to integrate the login styles into the color palette. Uh, yeah, for sure. Cool. Any other uh, feedback or questions on this one? All right. So without further ado, I think actually we might have an item here that we forgot to remove from last week. Uh, Felix, should I remove this one? Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, we talked about that last week. A quick reminder, yeah, that we are looking into stuff what to do next. Uh, we are doing discovery. We, we will finish CSS only work in, uh, and aesthetic only changes by the time we get done with icons. Uh, and these uh, nice empty states that Joe has uh, sh shared. And after that, we will probably be looking into deeper changes, like, I don't know, credentials, plugin, rebound, uh, build history page, whatever. It depends on what theme shows us next. So. Awesome. So Tim, do you want to share some uh, backstage Jenkins plugin updates here? Yep. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen if you're gonna share, no problem. That is an intense background, Tim. Cool, um, you should be able to see my screen. So this is the Backstage website. Um, it's just a quick intro into Backstage if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's, it's mostly used as like a um, developer portal um, just to centralize all of your developer tooling in one place. Um, just integrating all of your, so you've, you've got a lot of services, you've got a lot of documentation, 
and you need to create get you need to create git repos you may need to create environments you um you've got builds you've got quality on your builds um and so this is just trying to bring all those metrics and tasks into one place and even doing things like um, removing documentation by just adding tasks into here that you can just put to a workflow um, to just simplifying the developer development experience. Um, so I've just done a um, proof of concept or an alpha um, Jenkins plugin for this, which brings the Jenkins build results into it. Um, I'll just give a quick view through what the, so the what you saw on that website is the Spotify internal version. Um, they open sourced it back in March and it looks a bit different. It's got the same goals, but it just doesn't quite look the same. Um, so this is the homepage, this is the service catalog. Um, so you see all of the, um, all of your microservices or components or uh, whatever you call them here. Uh, but you can also have, it also supports other, other things, so not just applications, supports websites, libraries, documentation or whatever. Um, it's all driven based off Kubernetes likes um, uh, descriptors. So it's just a file um, which has its name and then um, the annotations describe additional information on it. Um, so I've said, I've added some Jenkins specific configuration, um, which basically says um, what GitHub organization and repo it's in, because um, it's using GitHub organization folders. Um, you'll see other things here, like the documentation that's been published. Um, you can create a GitHub repo, so I can go in here and choose Fill out, fill out a small form um, and say where it's going to go and then it will create a GitHub repo based on a template. Um, and then there's some other plugins as well. Um, so I'm just going to show you the Jenkins plugin. Um, so this here is the RPE suite backend. Um, it's got a last master build widget which shows the build status and a link through to Jenkins. And you see here, this has gone through to build 22, which is the last one for RPE suite backend. Um, and then there's another widget here, which is the, um, the build details widget, um, which shows all of the builds um, for this um, application. So it's got the status, a lot of them have failed, but you've got down here, um, we've got some different test results. So it's showing a test report um, and that, links through to the Jenkins test report as well. Um, and you can link in, then it's all linked into, it's all integrated with GitHub for like GitHub pull request or the GitHub branch. And there's also a, um, a build details view as well. So this is a summary of the build with the title, some more information, and you can go and view it on Jenkins or view it on GitHub. Um, and as more people use it, then it can be filled in with more information, um, like get commits, get branch, and the actual build log as well, potentially. Um, but the build logs probably quite a bit of work. Um, but this is just basically an initial alpha version of the plugin. Um, there's a pull request up on this for on um, Spotify backstage. So backstage is a Spotify product or Spotify kind of open source. Yeah, it's a Spotify open source product that they open sourced back in March, um, but it's got uh, quite a few companies that are looking to pick it up or have adopted it. Um, Except for Jenkins builds, I mean, what do people normally use this for? Well, I guess not for Jenkins builds normally because it wasn't a plugin, but what's the kind of uh, typical use case for that? Just looking here back at the video, so this is, Basically, they've got their squad metrics, which is all of the metrics for their team. Um, so it's a central view of all of your applications in one place built off live data. So one problem in organizations is you just get so many applications that you lose them. You don't know who owns them. You don't know who to contact. Um, yeah. And things like API docs, your API docs might be in a different system. Um, yeah. So in this, you can embed your API documentation for the service in one place. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, creating, so onboarding a new team is like creating all the repos that they need, creating um, maybe a, a GCP project. So in here, there's a GCP plugin where you can create a GCP project 
you just fill out the fields and it automatically does it for you. Um, so one major use case is like um, is creating um, uh, repositories based on a organization template. So you can define templates for your Java, your Node.js, your Go, um, and your libraries all pre-baked with all the organization specific configuration. Right. So rather than using like different um, templating engines for each library, you just for the user, it doesn't matter. They don't need to worry about it. Um, it's, it's basically trying to just bring all of the different tools into one place. Um, yeah. Does anyone want to see anything else um, on this? Just, just to clarify, Tim, so you could, you're developed and contributed this plugin for Backstage, right? Yep. Yeah, wait, I got this. Is, got last this is one. awesome. Last. Sorry, this, this is, is really awesome. Jenkins plugin, or is this a Backstage plugin? This is a Backstage plugin for Jenkins. Yeah. Um, but it runs in, I mean, it's written in Backstage. Yeah, yeah, it's written in yeah. the Backstage. Yeah. Um, it's here. So it's all um it's all written in TypeScript and React. Right. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Really cool. Thank you for sharing. Oh. Yes, at some level this competes a little with CloudBees SDM, though it's probably a little bit of a different focus. But I'm just thinking of uh, CloudBees is working on the software delivery management tool. Not that this really matters in the open source context, it's more an observation. Oh not I mean yeah nice one. awesome yeah. yeah especially if this is a I think you said they, they open source it back in March is that the case yeah yeah it's in March and it's it's got it's very active oh, okay I was just gonna say yes yeah, some sometimes these things take right off right so being able to connect to Jenkins is pretty awesome um, yeah they've got a team working on it and there's lots of contributors from different companies there's some major contributions as well so API documentation was completely contributed by one company um, and lots of other random contributors coming in. Cool. Uh, well, thank you, Tim. Uh, it looks like we have a line item for tables to divs. Was that carry over from last uh, session? Uh, it was just a brief update. Um, okay. So I um, got all of the F tests that were reported by Felix. They're all passing now. Um, not quite all of them emerged, but most of them emerged. Um, so I think it was about about five. So there was Felix reported about 60, 70 issues, but only about five or six of them were ath tests. Um, so those are the ones that are easy to fix and reproduce. Um, and out of those, I think um, two of them were actual issues um, and the other four of them were, um, well, two of them were unrelated breakages and that were mostly done by this, by this project, by the CSS refresh, broke a lot of ath selectors. Um, and then two of them were tables to divs selectors broken. Um, but that's, so that's all sorted now. Um, I think there's a PCT one in, in the declarative pipeline to take a look at. Um, but apart from that, those are all the known breakages left. Um, I'm sure there's more breakages, but um, I'm not sure what the plan was for taking it forward. Daniel Beck asked about whether we plan to unhold it now uh, that the LTS baseline cutoff has happened. Um, or whether we want to do some more work on um, fixing plugins or more exploratory work on seeing if we can do it without having to fix plugins. So you're saying you so you're so you're suggesting uh, uh, we continue uh, fixing plugins or so basically what what's what um, what would, what in your opinion would be stopping this from being merged right now? Um, I think we really just need matrix auth released, really. So because matrix auth matrix auth is quite a major plugin. Um, so I think I gave a list of the pending pull requests. Um, Oleg merged and released his. Um, I think there's a I think there's a pipeline plugin that needs releasing. So I think it was merged a couple of months ago, but it wasn't released. Um, so I think that needs releasing. But I think I think we've done all the ma all the major ones that we're aware of. Um, it's, it's a bit of a pain because all because a lot of ath tests are broken anyway. It'd be nice to have like a green ath run, but um, 
there's so many broken app, broken app tests that um, you can't really do that. Can you repeat that the last thing, please? I said that, uh, quite a few ATH tests are, are already failing for unrelated unrelated reasons. Yeah. No, yeah, we those uh, ATH test failures. We just uh, we are we have a building in, in the running cloud. Which we are building the form changes against the ATH to make sure nothing breaks. So that's how we found out about those, and that's how. Uh, well, I think out of all of those, only one was not due to this. Um, uh, there was two, I think. There was the, the side. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Packages and something, something else. Yeah, you're right. And the cask plugin, yes. Yeah. Um, so right now, I, I, I really don't know because I really would like the layout breaking stuff fixed. But if it's not possible, at least I would like to see it. It's, it's not if it's not possible. So what would you... Do you have a target date or, or an ETA for what the merge could happen? Uh, there's no real date. It's just um, we have a window now that we're early in the weekly. Um, so it's we're, we're past the LTS cutoff and it's quite matured. Um, it, on the other side, it's less effort to maintain it now. We've mainlined, so we've mainlined all the JavaScript changes and all the CSS changes are all mainlined. Um, so we've we've had those in for about the last three weeklies. Um, mm -hmm. I think we had a couple of we had a couple of very minor issues, I think, but nothing serious. No, um, I, I we actually I think we I found one and managed I, I, writing it to you. But yeah, we and we need to report it later. But yeah. yeah. Is there anything yeah? What do we think? Do we think it's worth proposing it for merging it soon or I think we've still got more outstanding issues to fix? Mm -hmm. I don't know right now. We need, we need to sleep on it. Yeah. Let's, I think, let's get those plugins released anyway. And once the plugins are released, there's probably nothing blocking it. And if just do some more exploratory testing. Um, okay. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to ship it if we can. Like it's, it's been there for well over a year now. <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for the update. Um, looks like we had nothing else on the list for today. Does anyone have anything they'd like to raise? Nothing. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's it for today's session. Short one, but a good one. Thank you, everybody, and. We will see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.